took your time in getting here. Lay in there? Yes. You got everything straight? Sure. Which one is it? Nick. Good, good, good. Hold it. I'm a farmer, Frank. You're a candidate, Josh. Don't ever forget that. Let me see, make it uh, definite on the sugar beets. <clears throat> That's the entire crop. All of it. Now let me have 3,000 bushels of your olives. You want an option on the rest? Now let me check back east and I'll let you know in a couple of days, all right? All right. And I'll take 6,000 bushels of your peaches. And if it's all right with you, I'd like a three-day option on the rest. You got it. Thank you. Seems to me you're buying a powerful lot of Barclay produce, sir. Sorry. But in this way, I couldn't help overhearing. I guess maybe I was eavesdropping. It's a bad habit. But when a man's running for public office, I guess he's got a duty to keep up with all that's going on. In case my campaign literature hadn't caught up with me yet, name's Hawks. Joshua Hawks. Yeah, I've heard of you, Hawks. Now, if you don't mind, we'd like to get back to our business here. Oh, I don't mind, but maybe this fella here and the people he buys for should. Hawks, you've been running off with the mouth up and down this state. I can't even keep up with the charges you've made. <laughs> That's probably because you wasn't interested, young fella, but I got something in the works now that I think is gonna interest you, Barclay, something fair. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it ought to interest you, too, sir. The sooner you know about it, the better. I think that our business is finished, Mr. Well, Barclay. Now, you don't know it yet, mister, but you ain't got no business with them. That is, unless, of course, the people you represent don't mind buying produce that was growed on stolen land. That's right. That's right. Gentlemen, I accuse this man's daddy, Thomas Barclay, of having stole every foot of land his family lays claim to, pirated, and stole in as black a series of crimes as the West has ever witnessed. Take it outside, friend. It's all right, Rudy. Let him finish. I accuse your daddy of being a tyrant, a common thief. And before I leave this valley, everybody's gonna know that I speak the truth. Everybody's gonna know before you leave this club, Hawks. You're gonna prove every word you said is true or take it all back. It's all right, folks. It's all right. I expected violence. So you can beat me up, boy, but you can't shut me up. Proof. Proof, Hawks, that every word you said about my father is true. It will out, boy, but in my time, not yours. Oh, yes, do with me what you will. You can torture me, beat me, even kill me. But the truth will ring free over the sound of your hired guns. Wait a minute, Sonny, I ain't through. Above the clank and the clamor of the chains with which you've enslaved your neighbors. You can beat me. You can kill me. But the truth... The truth shall set us all free! And with that, Nick Barclay delivered, continued on page three. Delivered a smashing left-hand blow to the jaw. It was a right hook. Which fell the surprise hawks like a rope steer. Oh, you've seen it. And I'll tell you something else. There were a half a dozen people there that congratulated me for shutting hawks up. And another dozen that told me to tell them the next time I decided to hit them, and they'd buy tickets. Wonderful, Nick. 
Wonderful. You committed a public service. Maybe you should run for governor. Well, I'd stand a better chance of being elected than Hawks would, and I'd make twice the governor he would. And if you think for one minute that I'm going down there and apologize for Nick, him... Nick, I'm not saying the man doesn't deserve something. He deserves our silence, our contempt. By hitting him, you gave that idiotic charge half the front page. Then I say we use it to our advantage. It's one thing for him to go around telling a few people that we stole our land, and it's another thing entirely for him to plaster it all over the largest newspaper in this valley. I say we sue him for libel. And I say he's hoping and praying that that's exactly what we do. You couldn't have done more for his campaign if you went out and personally got him 50,000 votes. Nick, the man can't buy that kind of publicity. So we just let him go on lying about us. He's not going to go on lying about us. Ha! Huh. Unless we sue him for libel. Believe me, I know the breed. Strictly hit-and-run tactics. Tomorrow, he'll forget all about the Barclays. Scatter his buckshot on some other target. And the day after that, another and another. That's been his pattern up to now. Bigger and better lies, bigger and better targets. It all makes Hawks more important. But, Jared, somebody has to challenge him, stop him, make him stay put long enough to face up to his charges. Mother, unless we dignify him by paying attention to him, he's not going to get any votes in this valley. Maybe not, but I stopped by Dan Sheridan's on the way to see if we could count on him for the picking. And? He said sure he'd be by if we can prove Hawks is lying. Dan said that? Right. Well, I'll talk to him. Well, I wouldn't count on it because he put his foot down. Well, I'll kick it out from under him. Oh, Nick. All right, all right. I don't want him working for us anyway. There's a lot more people in this valley that are much more willing to work. Well, I'm going into town to see if I can find some of those. You want to come along? Yeah. Jared, how many Dan Sheridans do you think there are in the valley? Up until a minute ago, I wouldn't have said there was one. Put it down I here. saw him winding up to throw that haymaker ten minutes before he threw it. <laughs> I tell you, I thought I was going to have to run into his place. Say, hey, Edna, darling, would you put some cream and sugar in that for me like a darling girl? And uh, just let yourself go. I sure do like sweets. Yeah, that's a darling girl. When you done, thank you. Yeah, you sit down and chat with us a spell. Thanks, Josh, but I've just taken out some sewing. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. A pretty woman like you sit around and be admired. And let your campaign manager run around with holes in his socks. <laughs> Frank, what's the matter with you? If I had a woman like that, I sure wouldn't have her. Darn them much. Josh? Hey, Josh. Look. Oh, good, Donald. Good. Print it up a thousand. Yeah. Hired three guys to help me. Gonna pay them a silver dollar a piece. Yeah, good down, good. Well, if they're waiting for me, I better get them started. Yeah. Uh, may I see that? I accuse Tom Barkley. Very colorful language. Obviously not yours. Mm, oh, it ain't his. It's mine. Sure, you knock a man's wind out. You don't wait for him to catch his breath. You move in for the kill. And maybe you get killed. I warned you, never put charges in writing. They can be used against you. I told you a dozen times, never repeat the same charge in the same place. All right. When you're bluffing, Josh, never put yourself in the position to be caught. All right. Well, I'm maybe I was a little too uh, impetuous. That's $5 word he learned me. Go down and call it all off. Hey, Josh, you ain't gonna let these go to waste. Now, you want me to be governor, don't you, Daniel? Do as I say. Go. How could you? And without asking my advice. All right! All oh, right, when I get to be governor, I'm going to clear every decision with you first. <laughs> now, come on. Let's see one of them nice old smiles. Come on. Come on! <laughs> well, there it is, friend. You know now where I stand. I want to tell you something, neighbor. No. No, I want to... I want to promise you that wherever 
There is corruption. Wherever. There's a fat old cat with his hand in the public treasury, stealing from the working man, the farmer, the man who's trying to dig a living out of the hard soil with his bare hands, wherever. Wherever there is corruption, I'm going to turn a light on it. I'm going to look out for your interests. I'll tell you something else. You send Joshua Hawks to Sacramento, and you can call the governor of this great state your friend. And that'll be the truth. Well, now, questions from anybody? Daniel, fill up them coffee cups again. Pass out some more of them good homemade donuts. Now, there's got to be some questions. <laughs> now, come on, there's got to be some questions. Anybody you'd like punched in the nose, name him. I'm your man. Yes, friend. I understand you've been yapping about Tom Barkley being a thief, stealing every foot of his land. But we'd like to hear tell about that. Would you, friend? You'd like to hear about Tom Barkley, would you? All right, neighbor. You'll hear. Daniel, I reckon these neighbors of ours would like to see these. Circulate. Pass him out. Now, I haven't spoken about this since Nick Barkley viciously attacked me. I haven't spoken about it since them circulars was printed. You say Mr. Hawks has been circulating these. Come now, Mr. Wesley. Every time he can gather an audience of two, and you know it. Though the fact is, I didn't know. You know, types like you and your candidate usually use the hit and run tactic. Kind of a shame you didn't this time, because now it's going to cost you. There's no need to act like this. You're a lawyer, I'm a newspaper man. Neither of us was born yesterday. How many times have you skirted the truth in court to help a client, to make a legal point? Let's don't embarrass us both, Mr. Wesley. I want a complete and full retraction to every allegation. Frank! Say, Frank. Well, well, I better put up my guard, Mr. Jared Barkley. A little late for that, Mr. Hawks. Remember, a complete and full retraction in writing, or else. Or else? <laughs> what are you going to do, super libel? Josh, let me handle this. Well, they can go whistle for it. You're bluffing. You don't want no long, drawn-out court case, and you know it. That's the point, Mr. Barkley. A drawn-out court case, even if you win it, will do you more harm than good. Keep the charge alive. Now, why don't we sit down here and try and discuss this reasonably? There ain't going to be no discussion, because there ain't going to be no retraction. I got under your skin, and you know it. The fat cat's beginning to itch. And you're gonna itch a lot more before I'm through with you. I'm gonna make them Barkley scratch till they bleed. Well, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Hawks. Thank me for making what I'm gonna have to do to you such a pleasure. Good day, gentlemen. Well, now you've done it. Huh? I warned you not to put this in writing. Our campaign contribution. I warned you not to carry this to the point where we'd have to put up a shut up. Now well, look, I ain't running. Now that charge I made sticks. The charge you made. The charge I invented. Invented, Josh. Well, they're thieves, all of them. All them rich landowners stole some of their land, and the richer they are, the more land they stole. And if we keep digging up dirt, we'll bury them. Out of your mind. I spent weeks digging into the Barclays' personal history. Business dealings, nothing. The purest driven snow. But you know that as well as I do. Yeah. Yeah, and I know something else. Something else you taught me. You said if you can't prove nothing, then accuse him of the wildest charge you can. And you said, let's accuse Tom Barkley of stealing every foot of his land. Oh, I say maybe he did. I say let the charge stick. And I say we've got a tiger by the tail. And I say we can ride it right into the governor's mansion if you got the guts. It's not a question of guts. <laughs> you know, when we started on this trek about a thousand miles behind all the other candidates, I remember you were scared for me. I remember you were saying, I wonder if I should waste my time and energy on a fellow who might crack under the pressure. It never entered my head that you might crack under the pressure, Frank. Oh, you've been a good teacher. Yes, you have. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't have gotten nowhere without you, but now I'm wondering maybe 
Just maybe you taught me all you can. Maybe if things are getting too hot for you, it might be better for both of us if you got off right now. I don't know, Josh. Maybe you're right. Maybe we can fight them. Maybe I can dream up some documents. Say a friend of yours worked in the land office. He's dead now, so of yeah, course... And as they say, dead men tell no lies. Maybe we can drown them in official-looking documents, and by the time they check them out, I will we'll be governor. I'll be governor. Of course. <laughs> of course. some exercise and I wasted half a day. Then Hawks intends to continue making those charges. Possibly invent a few more. You know, we may have underestimated our Mr. Hawks. He's a little smarter than I thought. At any rate, he called my bluff. Why a bluff? Well, it just plain takes too long to win a liable suit and he knows it. But I may have figured out another way. I stopped by to see Senator Palmer, ask him to form a committee. A committee? A committee? Hmm. Four unbiased men whose word is beyond reproach, no axe to grind, who will demand that Hawks put his evidence into the record. We better tell our friend Senator Palmer to round up his committee in a hurry. Since we're bleeding. Now, that'll only take a couple of days. Surely we can wait that long. Oh, we can wait that long. I'm not too sure about our crops. Dave's holding up his order. He got word from the people he buys from back east to hold up until this whole business with Hawks is settled. Well, that's ridiculous. Dave's people say we've been charged with stealing our land. The titles are all clouded. And if what Hawks says is true and the land's not ours, neither is the produce we grow on it. Governor Joshua Hawks. Heaven help us. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. You've got to leave him. I can't. It's come to that, hasn't it? You lie, cheat. You don't care who you hurt. As long as it would take him one step closer to the governor's chair. For as long as it takes us. We both knew it would be a long, hard fight when we got into it. Where does it end? I can't take it anymore. The way he looks at me. He treats you with such, such contempt. He's under pressure. We're all under pressure. The worst of them is coming out. But once she's governor... Oh, 
Frank, that's the most hideous warp dream of all. Oh, darling, no, you're wrong. Do you remember the first time we saw him? <laughs> when he was running for a sheriff in a whistle-stop town? <laughs> what a sight he was. Belly hanging over his belt and a stubble of a beard. I wondered why everyone wasn't laughing. Because they saw it, too. And heard it. The way I heard it. Some kind of magic. Power. Something very special. If only I could harness it. You found the power and the glory in him, Frank. But you haven't harnessed it. He's a child. He's learned to walk and talk again. He's feeling his oats. All right. I'll give him a little rope. Let him get snarled in it. Just a little while longer, darling. Just a little more time. Frank. Frank! Josh! 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 got himself stinking drunk and nearly set fire to himself and the hotel. What's burning in here? But for your next door neighbors, it might have been you. Next time you start drinking, you better be sure your lamp is out. Josh, 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 you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. What are all those people doing there? What is this, a circus? Get them out of here. Josh. All right, folks, clear out. Everything's under control. Wait. Go on, everything's under control. Wait, wait. Hold it, folks, folks, I'm purely sorry to interrupt your slumbers this way, but if there's anybody here from the hotel management, I want it to be known that I ain't paying one cent of this fire damages. No, sir, that bill goes where it belongs, to the Barclays. Now, I ain't saying they started this fire. There ain't no evidence of that yet. But it does seem funny to me that on the one night when I was working on papers, that proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that Tom Barkley stole every foot of his land that this had to happen. Ah, it's gonna be all right. You can rest easy. I don't believe they'll try her again, and if they do, I'll be ready for him. Nobody's gonna shut me up when I'm speaking for you folks. Now, good night to you all, and God bless you. Good night, neighbors. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. <laughs> Makes sense, don't it? The Barclays burning up old Josh and his evidence. <laughs> Come on, Frank. <laughs> Oh, Peter, how nice to see you. Maria? Come in. I'll have Silas get us some coffee. No, thank you. I, I will only be staying but a minute. Oh. And uh, considering the nature of my visit, I'm not sure you'll want me to stay any longer. Oh. I gather you haven't read this morning's paper yet. Someone tried to set fire to Josh Hawk's hotel room last night. He says he thinks you Barclays were behind it. And what do you think? Well, naturally, I think it's ridiculous. But I am a newspaper editor, Victoria. And news, no matter how ridiculous or how false, news is news, so you printed a story. Hmm? Well, I'll print your side, too, and oh, type Oh, now, you know perfectly well I won't dignify this with a denial. Well. Congratulations, Peter. That's quite an article. All hawks, or did you embellish it with some of your purple prose? All right, Jared, think what you like. But you can't laugh him off any longer. He's a candidate for governor, and he's gaining support. No small thanks to you. I don't suppose you bothered to check this out before you plastered it all over the front page. 
I didn't vouch for the authenticity of that story. No, you just printed it right out of Hawk's mouth, knowing full well that anything printed in a so-called reputable newspaper would have a certain ring of truth. I can't help what people think. But believe him or not, there's no denying that whatever Joshua Hawks says or does is news, and I have to... I'm sorry. What the devil did he come here for? To apologize, I think. Jared, do you think people will believe this? Well, I've already heard remarks like, where there's smoke, there's fire, or, uh, quote, would a man running for governor make such charges without evidence, unquote. And there's a little matter of Senator Palmer having to talk to more than a couple of dozen men just to get the four to sit on the committee. Maybe we're lucky to get the four. They meet Saturday morning. I'll finish writing this in my room, Josh. Oh, this... Let me read. Well, I'll be reading the statement. You'll be reading it, but it's supposed to be coming from me. I don't like it. All I'm saying is that the committee... I can read, Frank. You're saying it I don't want to appear in front of a hand-picked Barclay committee. Well, because they're biased against you and therefore unable to render an impartial judgment. A committee composed of a judge, a doctor, a minister and a senator. No, people will say I'm weaseling out, trying to run away. I never backed off in a fair fight yet. A fair fight? Why, we've lied and cheated all the way down the line. A slaughter us. I warned you not to yell too loud, not to press your luck, but you wouldn't listen, would you? You had to pile it on, twist the knife deeper and deeper and deeper. Well, now you've done it. And if somehow we do manage to stay out of jail, Maybe you can go back to digging a few dollars out of the dirt. Maybe that's all you're good for. A stupid dirt farmer! Right, get out of here. Get out of here. What do you want, Josh? Shall I clear out? Oh, you want to stay, stay. There's a job for you here. All right, Josh. All right. Josh? Uh, Josh, uh, I give Mrs. Barkley your message. Uh, uh, personally. Mrs. Barkley? Josh, surely not now. Good night, Frank. Well, what did she say? It's all set. Well, <laughs> well, well. She's going to see me, the great lady herself, face to face. Well, I've waited a long time for this, Daniel, and now she's coming. No, we ain't licked yet. Not by a long shot. Jared, Nick, and Audra took turns last night trying to talk you out of this. Would I be wasting my breath, too? Yes, he. I thought so. You know, you're a stubborn woman. Yes, he. All right, why do you think Hawks wants to see you? I don't know, which is why I want to see him. You know, you don't mind if I stay around and wait for you, do you? You know, as a matter of fact, I was going to suggest it. And he, thanks for not telling me that curiosity killed a cat.
Come in, come in. I was uh, going to mix myself a drink. You uh, got to join me? No, thank you. Sit down, please. Please. I uh, hope you don't mind. Mind? Well, I've been a handsome widow woman like you, alone in a hotel room with a man. Oh, my reputation has survived worse assaults, but thank you for caring, Mr. Hawks. Oh, make it, Josh. Now, what's bothering you, Mr. Hawks? Bothered me. Nothing bothered me. I figured it'd be some bothering you. Oh, a minor annoyance, which we're about to take care of for good. Now, if that is all... Sit down. Please. 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 Um... I was just that I heard that, uh... One of your produce fires, a big one, uh, canceled out on the deal. Another minor annoyance. And he didn't cancel, far from it. You know, you get enough of these minor annoyances, might add up to a big headache. But uh, there ain't no use for that. I got a lot of stumping to do before I wind up my campaign. And I guess maybe I have overstayed my welcome. <laughs> if you... Uh, Get what I'm driving at, Miss Bargley? Well, I'm sorry. Perhaps I'm a little naive about these matters. If uh, you would explain it a little bit more. You understand very well what I'm driving at. You're hurting, sir. Nobody can tell me different. You're hurting, and you're going to hurt a lot worse before I'm through with you. Now, you try and nail me to the cross, and I'll fight you every way I know. And I know more ways than you're kind of a dreamed of. So don't you think that... There ain't no need to do that. No need at all. Never did like to kick a man when he's down. We fried our fish here. Bigger catch elsewhere. Los Angeles. Governor built a bridge down there. Taxpayers' money, fraud. Inferior materials, see what I mean? Other fish to fry. Tell you what. I'm gonna let you Barclays off the hook. See what I mean? Off the hook. Well, that's very noble of you. <laughs> and uh, you got cut up a little trying to wriggle free. Well, take it from old Doc Hawks. <laughs> You'll get well in a hurry. People forget in a hurry. We leave town business as usual. No hard feelings. Well, what do you say, Miss Bargley? Do we let up on one another? No, we do not, Mr. Hawks. Miss Barkley. All the time I've been talking, you've been looking. 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 Like you remembered me from somewhere. Well, don't you remember me, Mrs. Barkley? Go on. Get out. Why should I remember you? You shouldn't. It's a long time ago I... I worked for you. I worked for your husband. Yeah. Broke my back. Planting and harvesting, putting money in Tom Barkley's pocket so he could put beautiful clothes on his beautiful wife and she could ride through her fields like a queen. And maybe... Maybe just once in a while she could look down and say... Hello, with her lordly, queenly way to one of the peasants. You did that to me one time, one morning. You don't remember that, do you? No. Yeah, she said, Why, I don't believe we've met before. How do you do? I'm Victoria Barclay. Yeah. And anything that her highness can do for you, my good man, don't hesitate to speak up. <laughs> no, I'll tell you something. I was grateful for them few words. Oh, yes, those few precious words. Hey, she spoke to me. 
She spoke to me, yeah. Stinking with sweat and covered with dirt. She actually stopped and passed the time of day with me. <laughs> well, why aren't you laughing? It's funny, you know. It's funny. Sure, a stupid ape thinking that you'd recognize him after all them years. Maybe if I covered myself with dirt, it might help, huh? <laughs> You've twisted your own memory into hate for us. We employed many men. My husband treated each and every one of them fairly, and if you didn't think so, you were free to leave. <laughs> I know. I'm wasting my breath. Good day, Mr. Hoff. Miss Barkley! I'm gonna beat you! I'm gonna beat you, Barkley! Beat you! Anything else, Mr. Small? Oh, uh, no. Uh, I'll just take a few sticks along with me. Uh, you can send the rest up to the camp. Oh, I'll take a few, too. You want to sign for this? Oh, sure. Been working for the Barclays long, Mr. Small? About three or four months up the lumber camp. Uh, don't get into town much. They're the nice people, the Barclays. Nice to work for. Yeah. I put all the boxes away. Anything else? Oh, you can run along home, Steve. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. If you'd wait until after the meeting tomorrow morning, one day more or less, Edna. I wanted you to come in and join me for a... What appears to be a farewell drink. Well, you deserting a sinking ship, Edna? Edna hasn't been feeling so well, so Campaigning and getting too much for you, huh? It's not a matter of quantity, but quality. Excuse me. Ain't you gonna stick around and see what happens at that meeting tomorrow? Josh, about that meeting, I think I figured a way to play out our hand. It's an old lawyer's trick. I thought that instead of showing up with a lot of official-looking documents, no. why, why? I said, no. I promised the people of this valley that I had enough evidence in that briefcase to blast the Barclays off their land. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna weasel out. I don't understand you. You mean you're gonna walk into that room? But they'll rip you apart. You'll be lucky to walk out of there alive. Oh, I'll walk out alive. <laughs> there ain't no luck to it. It's planning. You ought to know that, Frank. Careful, planet. Josh, you about ready? Yeah, I'm about ready then. Well, then, I reckon it's goodbye. Goodbye, Josh. Good luck. <laughs> He's not bluffing. He's up to something. I wish I knew what it was. Do you, Frank? Where is he going this time of night? You're not leaving until tomorrow morning, so I thought that maybe when I get back... We, we might... can talk, Frank, but you won't talk me out of it.
There's that crack board. Right there. That's where I'll be sitting. From the time I light the fuse to the first explosion, it'd be about two minutes. No, 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 no. Make it finer than that. All you gotta do is drop that book so I know. I know. Here. I know. Amble out of the room, meet me out the back. I gotta boost out the window. All right, all right, all right, all right. Two minutes. I'm gonna fix the bar case. Might even put him in jail. Maybe for murder, huh? <laughs> Come on, what do you want me to do? Oh, start stringing it out. decided to leave with her in the morning. Oh? When did you come to that decision, right? Well, you said I was free to go the other day. That you had learned all you could from me. Well, but you should have left the other day. And you sure shouldn't have come out here tonight. I didn't see anything. You were coming up out of the cellar when I arrived, that's all. He's lying. I'll leave town, Josh. Get on the first train out of here in the morning. I won't tell a soul. Tell him what? Thought you didn't see anything. I see. We kill him right now. All right, Josh. I'll leave tonight. Now. I'll ride out right now. I don't believe you, Frank. He was a good teacher. You taught me an awful lot, and you rung me a long way, but you taught me that I should never carry any liabilities. And that's what you are to me right now, Frank. You stand in my way. Let me get it now. No, no, Frank. You'd run right to the sheriff, and I can't let you do that. No, that let it bring the whole town down on our heads. Josh, you're mad! <laughs> Lost your nerve, Frank. Right? You want this delivered, Mr. Barkley, or you taking too long? I'll have uh, Steve bring it out to the ranch later on. All right, you want me to ship along a case of dynamite at the same time? Dynamite? A fellow from your lumber camp ordered a case of dynamite. Took a few sticks with him. What was his name? Well, I, uh... Got the bill right here somewhere. Yeah. Jack Small. Jack Small. We don't have any Jack Small at our lumber camp. I'm sorry, Mr. Barkley. Now, if he'd have took any more than three sticks of dynamite, I'd have made real sure he was working for you. But when he said to ship the rest of it out to the lumber camp, I... Now, why would anyone want to go to all that trouble just to steal three sticks of dynamite? That's what I'd like to know. What else can you tell me about this? Well, he, he Mr. was... Mr. Barkley. Uh, yes, dear. Uh, I know the man who bought the dynamite yesterday. What was his name? Well, I don't know that, but a few days ago, he gave my brother a dollar to hand out some papers for him. They, 
They said some bad things about your father. Thank you, Steve. Mr. Hawks, it is getting a bit late. Yes, yes, I, I know, Judge. But Mr. Wesley, my campaign manager, has got to be here. Oh, very well, but we can't wait much longer. Yes, I don't know where he could be. He, he's got to be here. He helped me assemble the evidence in this briefcase. supposed to be here. So you said, Mr. Hawks, you were afraid I might influence the jury. Well, I don't think anything could influence these men except the facts. I'm a little tired of hearing secondhand about the crimes we've committed. This time I'd like to face my accuser. Come, Victoria. Sit down. Thank you. All right with me. Let her stay. I'm going to go check outside. Hawks. Oh, well, they're in there. Why didn't you join them? We'll join them. Look, you you join them. Your mother's already ruined the meeting, so why don't the two of you run it? Now, I'm getting out of here. Hawks. Well, I'm a pretty good talker, Mr. Barkley, but I don't reckon I can argue with that. Ah. We gotta get out of here. Two sticks of dynamite are burning fuse down the cellar. Everybody out! Come on, move! Everybody out! Come on! Come on! Barkley! Barkley! Help me! Hawks are still in there! to know that the consul decided to put up a new building. They didn't have much choice, did they? Not after I offered to match the building cost dollar for dollar. Huh. Should have rebuilt the old one. Now, they're still digging out the wreckage. And you may be interested to know that they found our friend Mr. Hawk's briefcase containing all that damaging evidence against the Barclays. Wouldn't it have been something if he'd have pulled it off, killed those four men, then blamed us? Then have this turn up? Oh, he would have had an answer, an explanation. But the sad part of it is there would have been people who would have believed him. One thing that isn't so sad, while they've all been sitting around wondering whether or not they're going to buy our crops, the price of peaches went up five cents a bushel. That is mighty sweet indeed. Did you say five cents a bushel? Mm-hmm. Well, I suppose now they'll be calling us pirates. Well, if anybody does, who believe him? Well, Mr. Counselor, your briefs. Let's get some dinner. Your move. 
Hope everyone's all right. We lost an axle, lad, and I'm gonna need some help. Won't be but a few minutes, ma'am. If you'll wait over there. You fellas, see if you can get some logs. I'll get the wheel. Sure could, mister.
Nicholas, suppose we just go over this again, shall we? Now, as I understand it, you were in the woods. While you were pretending to keep yourself busy with some kind of paperwork, I was out risking life and limb trying to chase down that heifer we'd lost in the woods. Uh -huh. When suddenly this beautiful woman appeared out of nowhere. He made himself scarce, too, then. Uh -huh. This beautiful woman appeared out of nowhere and just flew into your arms. Is that correct? That is exactly how it happened. Uh huh. Heath, what do you think about that? That sure sounds reasonable. Happens to me every time there's a storm. Well, you boys better let it go at that until the lady comes down and tell you what really happened. Relax, Nick. She'll be down in a minute. I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed. Would you care to, uh... No, 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 Nick. You're too relaxed. Heath. How do you feel now? Much better, thank you. Order's been very kind. Would you like some tea? Just exactly what I need. I'll pour it, Mother. I know you're wondering how I happen to be running through the woods in that storm. Certainly not. Yes, we are, Miss Lynn. Please call me Sabrina. I'm afraid it's going to sound awfully silly. Oh, nothing would sound silly to me out there in a night like this. It was stupid of me, really. I was on the Stockton stage and it lost a wheel. It was so cold and windy. I thought I saw a light. It wasn't very sporting of me to leave the other passengers, I suppose. But then you found yourself lost, huh? And frightened. Those woods seem filled with all the goblins I hadn't thought of since I was a little girl. I'll have some too, Audrey, please. You mean tea? Yeah, tea. Jerry? Hmm? Oh, yes, certainly, certainly. Keith? By all means. You've all been so kind and thoughtful. Well, now, will you be staying in Stockton? Not for very long, I'm afraid. I have business in San Francisco. Well, now, that's not too far, is it? No, it isn't, in some ways. I'm so sorry. It's all right. That's that shutter I've been meaning to fix for the past two months. I'll take care of it right away. Uh, Heath, would you like to help me? I am sorry. Oh, that's all right. I expect you must be very tired. Wouldn't you like to go to bed? And one of the boys will take you into town in the morning. I guess I am tired. Would you say goodnight to the others for me? Of course. Thank you for everything, Audra. She's as nice as she is beautiful, isn't she? Very attractive. Well, shall I pour your tea now? My tea? Oh, I think you'd better save that for Nick. And you, uh, you went to that shooting contest at the fair next week. That's right, Preston. Well, now, that's, that's too bad. Because, uh, I'm gonna have to make you wish you entered that quilt and be instead. Say, Nick, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. See you, uh, Preston. <laughs> nice room for Miss Lynn, please. Yes, sir. A nice room with a window on the street. Say, aren't you the Miss Lynn that's missing off the stage? Well, I'm hardly missing, but yes, I am Miss Lynn. Well, the driver was here with your suitcase. You sure caused an uproar. He says that he was three hours looking for you. She's not missing now, is she? 
Oh, no, no, no. J j just follow me. Right this way. Well, Nick, you've done so much. You've been so kind. I hardly know what to say. Well, you could say you could let me show you around this afternoon. I mean, this is a beautiful country, but I'm afraid a beautiful stranger needs a guide. We could pack a picnic lunch. I'm afraid not. Well, what's the matter? Don't you like picnics? Oh, I love them. But I think it's better this way. Well, this sounds like a guy. It is. Well, easy come, easy go. Please say goodbye to your family for me again, and, and thank Audra for lending me this dress. I'll see that it gets back to her this afternoon. Right. Nick? Yeah? Thank you, especially. Nick! Hey there, old buddy. Now, that wasn't fair. I mean, the least you could have done was introduced us. Ooh, that sure was some filly you heard. Now, that's true. Why, we ain't seen nothing around here that pretty in quite a spell. Now, who was she? Preston, will you take off? Oh, I hope I didn't offend you with that talk about taking you in that shooting contest. Uh, Preston, I am in a hurry. I mean, it, it may have been the wrong time to say that. True as it might be. Now, wait a minute. You really think you can outshoot me? Well, let me put it to you this way. You get yourself a lot of practice between now and next week. Now, let me put it to you this way. I don't think I need any practice. I think I can whip you right here and now. Oh, now, well, why wait? Let's settle this little contest right now. Now, of course, we might be thrown in jail for shooting in the street, but it's going to be worth it to shut your face up. Well, I ain't against it, old buddy. Not if you insist. Oh, I insist. You got the matches? Sure. Press, maybe uh, you're the one who ought to get in some practicing. Nice shooting, Nick. Well, you win some and you lose some. Shall I be ready? One o'clock. One o'clock will be just fine. Fancy get-up for fence riding, isn't it, Nicholas? Yeah, sure is, but not for picnicking. Picnicking? Mm-hmm. Boy, howdy. Somebody die? Neither one of you got any class. Where are you going that outfit? I'm going to pick up Sabrina, and we're going on a picnic. Going on a picnic? That's right. What do you think she sees in him? No accounting for taste. Eat your hearts out, boys. Eat your hearts out. 
How about some more chicken? Mm. Woman should watch her figure. I thought that was a man's prerogative. Well, maybe it is. Oh, Nick, it's so beautiful here. It's just as you said. Big and grand. Beautiful. Well, speaking of beautiful, has anyone told you yet today that you are? Not yet. And I'm telling you. Thank you. Who are you, Sabrina? I thought I told you that. Well, you told me you were going to San Francisco on business, but well, there must be more. And I want to know everything about you. Well, after all, you are eating my chicken. Oh, well, in that case, I'm 22. I freckle in the sun. I'm still afraid of ghosts and goblins. I'm sad when it rains. And I love the sound of bells. Even that. Even? Well, now, what could possibly sound better than that? Nothing. Nothing in the world. <laughs> Except perhaps good fortune bells. Don't happen to have any on you, do you? Good fortune bells. My father brought some back once from India. And he said, when you find the right man, hang on to him. And hang these bells from the porch of your house. You know, I think I like your father. What was he? A sea cat? Importer? Ambassador? Do I look like an ambassador's daughter? You told me you were the daughter of a king, I'd believe you. My father was a king, in that he was loving and kind. He died when I was 11, and I went to live with an uncle. Who was not a king? Who was not a king? I left home when I was only 14. I swore then that someday I was going to take everything that life owed me. Perhaps you should be careful, Nick. I may be dangerous. Oh, I'll be careful. Yeah, I don't think you can be. I don't think it's in your makeup to be careful. Uh -huh. And I think that's why I enjoy being with you so much. <laughs> no special girl for you? Oh, no. no. But I'm beginning to think my luck's going to change. It's funny. You're so different from your brothers. Heath, still water in a pond. Jared, style, elegance. But you, impulsive. Oh? Uh -huh. The violence of a summer storm followed by a rainbow. All right, now, that's enough about me. <laughs> what about you? Who you got in San Francisco waiting for you? You've gotten all the information from me you're going to get. A woman should have some mystery. No more questions. I never told a man what he wanted to know anyway. Well, this time it really is goodbye, Nick. What? I won't be seeing you again. Oh, what are you talking about? I'm sorry. Oh, no. You just can't shut a door and close me out of your life without an explanation. Please don't make me explain, Nick. Sabrina, if there's something wrong, I would like to know. All right. 
There was a man. He was very kind to me when I needed help. I desperately needed someone who would be kind. Must I go on? Yes. I should have realized that he was falling in love with me. But at first I didn't care. And then I found out that he was a killer. A wanted outlaw. I saw the poster myself. I had traded one hell for another. So he ran away. Yes. He became insanely jealous. One night in a public restaurant, he shot a man just for talking to me. That's when I started running. Why didn't you go to the law? I was afraid he'd kill me for sure if I did that. So you've been running ever since? For almost a year now. No matter where I go, he rides in. And it starts all over again. It would be the same here. Sabrina, we could change all that. Nick, he swore he'd kill me. And any man who touched me. I can't risk that, not with you. So that's why you wanted to make this goodbye. Well, I can take care of myself, Sabrina. Of both of us. You don't know. He's a cold-blooded, savage killer. He's a professional gunman, you don't know. Well, I might if I knew his name. Jack Floyd. Jack Floyd. Yes, he has a certain fame. I didn't want you to know. Sabrina. You don't have to run anymore. Oh, Nick, you just met this girl. Now, you take this on for Sabrina, and it's just a matter of time. You walk around the corner someday, and this Floyd will be standing there with a gun in his hand. Well, now, let's see. What can I do? I, uh, could buy her a ticket to, uh, the Gobi Desert. Are you hard-headed? Let her go off again by herself, couldn't I? Heath, tell him what you know about this Jack Floyd. Well, I've never crossed trails with him in person, but I know a few who did. They're mostly dead. Now, you see what we're talking about? He's a pro, Nick. Who knows how many notches he's got on his gun legitimately. <laughs> oh, now, there's no sense you two trying to cheer me up. I've already made up my mind. Suppose you try and talk some sense to him. You know what you're getting into, Nick. Trouble? No more trouble than you've gotten yourself into. After I made sure it was worth the risk. It's worth it. She's really that important to you. Trouble and all, yes. Oh, big trouble, Nick. Mother, when did you ever hear of a Barkley running away from a little fight? <laughs> Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Why, just yesterday, old Preston challenged me to a shooting contest right in the middle of... Yes, I heard about it. You were lucky you weren't arrested. I won. <laughs> you uh, going somewhere? Uh, yes, I have a little date in town. Oh? Well, I think we'll just ride along with you. Uh-uh. I don't need any wet nursing. What are you talking about? We were going to go in anyway. This is a free country, isn't it? Uh-huh. And I plan to keep it that way. He's a big boy now, isn't he? Lynn in, please. Well, I'm sorry she's not in, but she said she'd be back presently. Oh. Well, uh... I'll wait.
startled me. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought oh, I was just waiting for you. Oh, uh, I had to send a wire to San Francisco. Oh, I see. So, what brings you to town? Well, I could say I came to town to get my horse shod, but, uh, well, to tell you the truth, I thought maybe you'd like to see the valley by moonlight. Oh, I do have some things to take care of, Nick. Oh. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Go and pick out a nice, gentle horse for me at the livery stable. And, uh, and we will see the valley by moonlight. When? In one hour. Ten o'clock. In one hour, I'll be there. Good. The devil. How'd he find you here? How does he always find me? He looks, he finds, he follows. I should have killed him in Willow Springs. I'll do it now. No. I know a way. I know a way to get rid of him and keep you out of it. It's got to be good. Foolproof. It is. It's your move. Jared? Hmm? It's your move. Oh. Kind of quiet without Nick around here, isn't it? Well, I can stand it. Yeah, yeah, so can I. Okay. Okay what? Okay, it's your move. But you haven't moved yet. What do you mean? I just did. You put the checker back in the same square. Oh. Well, I've had enough for the night anyway. You going somewhere? Into town. It's funny, I've had that same idea. Let's go. Yes, it is. But I'm tired of running from you. I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't. 
think so. I'm tired of him. Meaning? I've stood by him all this time. I've stood between him and you. I've shielded him. I've protected him. And he's going to be in town tonight. He's going to meet me at the livery stable at 10 o'clock. Ah, uh, this is a trick. A trick? The trick's been on me. Do you know what he told me tonight? After almost a year of living out of a suitcase and meeting in the shadows, do you know what he told me? He's met another woman. A cheap little dance hall floozy. The only reason he came to town tonight was to collect the money that I've been holding. Well, I'm all through. He's all yours. I don't believe that. I think you do. How could I have ever been afraid of you? He'll be there at 10 o'clock. Nick. Well, oh, you're right on time. I do have some virtues. <laughs> Nick, look out. It's him. Goodbye. So that's Jack Floyd. Yes. That's him. Jared, would you take Sabrina over the hotel for me, please? All right. No, I'm all right. I think I'll just lie down and rest. Now, Sheriff, seems like I just shot Jack Floyd. He's still breathing. Now, some of you men help me get him to a doctor. Not you, Nick. You wait in my office. And the rest of you go about your business. Come on, Nick. The sheriff gets here, I'll be... Victoria? Well, how's Lloyd? He just died, Nick. Well, that's that. Not quite. The man you shot wasn't Jack Floyd. 
course, was self-defense, no question about that. A couple of witnesses saw him draw his gun first. What do you mean it wasn't Floyd? His name was Pierce, John Pierce. I did a little talking before he died. It seems he'd been hunting and trailing this Floyd himself for some time for killing his brother in Arizona. He was lying. No, he had papers on him to prove what he said. Identification, news clippings. But Sabrina said... What about Sabrina? About Sabrina. It seems that this Pierce was following her, figuring she'd lead him to Floyd sooner or later. Being she was his girlfriend. Oh, no, no, that can't be. Well, it fits all the facts, Nick. Now, this Pierce made a life's mission seeking revenge on Floyd. Now, I, uh, found this on the body. That's the real Jack Floyd. That can't be. I know how you feel. I'm not too happy about it myself. He was right under my nose. He came in on this evening's stage. The driver told me that Sabrina met him. Could happen to anybody, Nick. Let me buy you a drink, Nick. I don't want a drink. from her before I do anything about this, Mother. And if it's true, I'm going to find Floyd and finish Pierce's mission no, for him. No, Look, Nick, I was no. set up for this. Don't you see that, Mother? Nick. I killed an innocent man. Let the law handle it. It was self-defense no matter who he was. And he's just as dead as if it had been murder. And you'll be just as dead from Floyd's bullet. Lynn, is she in? No, sir. Well, where is she? She checked out. Checked out? Where'd she go? Well, I don't know. She just checked out. Sorry. Somebody, Joe, I thought maybe she might be on this stage. Well, there was a woman, a Miss Lynn. But she and some man got off yet this side of the crossroads. Said they had some horses waiting or something. A man? What do you look like? Well, he's tall, about your build. Kind of a good-looking fella. Crossroads, huh? Something wrong, Nick? No, Joe, I'm sorry I bothered you.
Do you really like it here? Well, I've never had a home of my own. I haven't either. Not since I was a little child. Well, I guess we ought to send Nick Barkley a thank you now. <laughs> I'll write one tomorrow. And Mr. Pierce, I think he deserves some flowers. Hmm? I think we do. I'm going to plant rose bushes everywhere, and you're going to plant alfalfa. Alfalfa? <laughs> That's all fine, but uh, what are we going to do for excitement? Hmm? We're going to stay here until people have forgotten there ever was a Jack Floyd. Well, I guess we can figure out a few things to do for a while. It's what I've always wanted. Tell me that you like it, too. It's fine, sugar. Just fine. I'll prove it, too. As soon as I finish my work. See, you found a place to hang your good fortune bells. Well, now you seem surprised. I can explain. I bet you can. Nick, listen to me. I listened to you before and believed you. It was a beautiful setup, Sabrina. A beautiful setup. All right. I love him. I'm not ashamed of it. What are you going to do? I'm going to finish a job, a mission, if you like, for a man named Pierce. He had something he wanted done, and I'm going to see that it's done. But Jack didn't kill him. You did. Jack is innocent. That's not what they say in Arizona and New Mexico. Nick. Please don't do this to me. Jack, it's Nick Barkley!
no. <laughs> Why couldn't it have been me? You're not going to be that lucky, Sabrina. You're going to live. That about settles it, Nick. Except for the reward, and it's sizable, you know. Give it to Pierce's widow. All right. I'll see to it. But one thing, Steve. I'd have brought him in alive if I could have. I know that, Nick. Ah, uh, go on, get out of here. Carry everything. Hats, vests, fleece line, mackinaws for the winter. Sure. <laughs> now is the time to buy a mackinaw at a good price. Where'd you get these bells? Ah, they're nice, aren't they? I had a big ship bell before, but it gave our Betty here the staggers. I got these from a house that they were auctioning up in Glen Valley. Do you want them? They've got a history, you know. They come all the way from... India. Right. But, but, but that's not all. They're supposed to bring you good luck. Right again. Well, you can buy them if you like. I can see that you appreciate them. No, no, no. Let's, uh, let's let old Betty here enjoy them. 